Speaking and communicating is not just relevant for people like me who are standing on a stage delivering talks. You too need to be able to speak so that your ideas get heard and so that your points get across. How do you actually do that? That's what I'm gonna be talking about in today's video. I'm gonna share top speaking tips that you can use to make sure that your point gets across regardless if you're standing on a stage in front of thousands of people or if you're in a conference room with just three or four others. If you like this type of content, make sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the YouTube channel to get more content just like this. Okay. So let's get right into the tips. The first one that I wanna share actually comes from Stephen Covey. And he had a great rule in one of his books where he wrote, seek first to understand, then to be understood. And really what that means is before speaking to get your point across, it's important to let other people speak first so that you can understand what it is that they're saying, where they're coming from, where their stance might be, how they're feeling about the certain situation, then you can absorb and digest all of that information before you start speaking. So it's a little bit counterintuitive advice where the first strategy isn't actually to speak, but to start off simply by listening. This is important because one of the things that I oftentimes see inside of organizations is people fight to get their point across. We see this in political debates, we see this in boardrooms, we see this in conference rooms, on Zoom calls, all over the place, right? Everybody's speaking, they're trying to make their voice louder and louder and louder so that everybody else hears them. Oftentimes, the best thing that you can do is to stay quiet. Let other people speak so that you can absorb all the information and then you'll have a much better guide for what you should be saying, how you should be saying it, and who you should actually even be saying it Two, so first piece of advice there, first seek to understand before trying to get other people to understand you. Second piece of advice for you, speak 20% slower than you normally would. This is important because oftentimes when you are in a situation where you do need to speak, whether this is on stage in front of uh, an audience or whether it's in a conference room, what ends up happening is that you get a little bit nervous and then you start speaking a little bit quicker and then it becomes harder for people to follow what you're saying. So if you speak 20% slower than you normally would, what ends up happening is that it compensates for your increased speed and then you sound a little bit more normal. So try to practice that, try to visual that 20% that decrease, right? Putting your foot on the brake pedal a little bit when you are in those types of situations. When you get nervous, you, again, you tend to speed up. And when you slow down, not only can your thoughts come across clearer, but you will also avoid using typical filler words like um and like. So I have a daughter, a seven-year-old daughter. Her name is Naomi. And oftentimes when she gets very excited about something, I pick her up from school and I say, how was your day? And she'll immediately jump into, oh my God, daddy, you're not gonna believe what happened. And like, and then this happened. And then like, um, that happened. And, this, and I'm like, Naomi, slow down a little bit. And then when you speak slower, those filler words are gonna go away. And lo and behold, when she slows down and starts thinking about what she wants to say, the filler words vanish. And if a seven-year-old can remove words like um and like and and every five seconds, then guess what? So can you. How do you do that? Speak 20% slower than you normally would. Next strategy to get your point across is to use your tone, your pitch, and your volume. This is something that a lot of speaking coaches typically advise. Uh, this is something that a lot of professional speakers go through on a regular basis, tone, pitch, and volume. So tone is basically the mood. Uh, the mood can be cold or it can be very warm and friendly. So for example, it can be, hey, how are you? It's so good to see you, All right? That's warm. Or I could say, hey, How's it going? That's a little bit more cold and icy. So paying attention to the tone that you're using, whether you're in a one-on-one -on -one meeting or in a stage. If you're in a professional uh, business environment, you probably wanna have a little bit of a balance, right? You don't wanna come off as the ice queen or king, but you also probably don't wanna talk like you're at a family Thanksgiving feast. You wanna have a little bit of a balance of the warmth and the professionalism in there. Next is your pitch. The pitch is basically, is it gonna be a high pitch or a low pitch? So for example, if you get really excited about something, you might speed up and maybe your, your voice might raise a little bit. Whereas if you're trying to be a little bit more intimate and solemn and serious, 
then maybe your voice drops down a little bit. So depending on what it is that you're saying, you might, right, if you're asking a question, how could you do that, right? The pitch goes up a little bit. Whereas if maybe I'm talking about something serious or sharing a story, which I'll give an example of in just a minute, then maybe my voice drops down a little bit. So paying attention to your pitch is a very important tool for you to use. Next thing is also volume, how quietly or how loudly you are speaking. If you are very loud, then maybe you're super passionate about something. Whereas if you're quiet, then maybe again, it's a little bit more humble and intimate. You're trying to draw people in and you can see the difference again between those different ways of speaking. I gave a talk not that long ago in San Francisco to 10,000 people on a stage and I won't share the entire story. Maybe I'll put a, a link in this YouTube video to that video. But I started off that, uh, that talk by sharing a story. And I'll just give you kind of the first line of that story so that you can see how tone, pitch, and volume were used. And so it started like this. It was a dark and stormy night. A captain was sitting writing in his log when all of a sudden he was interrupted by one of his officers. Captain, captain, he said, there's a ship 10 miles ahead of us and it refuses to get out of the way. Did you tell them to get out of the way? We did, sir, but they refused to move. Well, then I'll tell them. So you can kind of see, right? It's, it's a little bit of a story there and there's a longer uh, story that goes behind it. It's around five, six minutes. But just in those one to two sentences, you can see how, that, how I was able to use the tone, how I was able to use pitch, and how I was able to use volume, especially because there were different characters in that story. So that strategy is very, very effective. Use tone, pitch and volume. Next strategy for you is to incorporate stories. So I was just demonstrating a story that I have used uh, when I have given talks before. Another story that I oftentimes use, and this is taken from my new book on leading with vulnerability. And one of the chapters actually starts off with a story. And it starts off with Hollis Harris is or was the CEO of Struggling Continental Airlines. And early in the 1990s, he was asked to send out a memo to his entire workforce. And he sends out a memo, and in that memo, he talks about the challenges and the struggles that the business is going through. He doesn't provide any kind of clear action or guidance on how to turn the business around. And then he ends his memo by telling his employees that the best thing they could do is to pray for the future of the company. The very next day, Hollis Harris was fired. Now, that's a story that I use to explain why you should not be vulnerable at work. And then I contrast this with another story that I won't get into now from a different CEO. But again, you can see that the story gets the point across more than me simply saying, oh, vulnerability at work doesn't really make that much sense. You really shouldn't do it because it can you know, cause more harm than good. The story sets the stage, gives a very clear example, connects with the viewers or the listeners, and it makes much more sense. So use stories whenever you can, especially even if you have data in there. Use the stories to back up the data instead of just presenting data. This is also something that Chip Heath recommended. I had him on my podcast very recently, and he wrote a whole book about how to uh, present data in effective ways stories was a big part of that. Next piece of advice is remember to breathe. A lot of people, when they're speaking, they get nervous and they forget to breathe. And I used to do this and I see a lot of people doing this. And you, when you forget to breathe, your not only does your voice change, but your posture changes, your demeanor changes. It's actually similar I remember a couple of years ago, I went to go get my blood drawn uh, just to do like an annual checkup. And the lady is coming over and she's getting ready to take my blood. And both the lady and my wife look at me, the phlebotomist, which is a person who takes blood. And they both looked at me and they're like, can you remember to breathe? Because what happened is I was sitting there like this, like I was a deer in headlights. My body was tense and I just looked like I was frozen. And they just said, remember to breathe. Relax. So you don't want, when you're speaking, you don't want to make it look and sound as if you're about to get your blood drawn. So take some deep breaths. It's okay to have those pauses. It's okay to go a little bit slower. When you breathe, you won't sound like you're speaking from up here and that you're forgetting. Just remember to breathe. Simple piece of advice 
very effective strategy that you can use. Next is that expect that you will be nervous and that's okay. There are all sorts of hacks that people are throwing around online of uh, you know how to avoid being nervous and don't think about it as being nervous. Honestly, I think that's BS. It's okay to acknowledge that you're nervous. Whenever I give talks to this day, I still get a little nervous when I go on stage. And that's not a bad thing. A little bit of nerves is actually good because it, it tells your body that you're trying to perform at a high level. Even a lot of great athletes, before they get ready to go on the court or wherever it is that they're playing, they still get a little nervous. It's natural, it's okay. So just tell yourself, you know what? I'm a little nervous, but, but it's okay. Everybody gets nervous when they do whatever it is that I'm doing. So again, expect that you will get nervous and acknowledge that you are nervous and that it's okay. Next strategy for you, next piece of advice is to know your material. One of the things that can make sure that you really get your point across is know your material, right? If you have to fumble through things, if you're looking for notes, if you don't know what you're saying, then obviously it's gonna be very hard for other people to grasp your key ideas and points. So make sure that you know your material. Maybe you rehearsed it a few times, maybe you practiced it a few times, whatever it is, just make sure you know your material. You don't have to recite everything, right? It's not a, a performance in terms of, right? You're not uh, on camera, you're not on Broadway, you don't have to get every line exactly correct. You don't wanna make it sound scripted or rehearsed, but know your material enough where you can communicate in a way that doesn't involve you stopping and starting every five seconds. And the last strategy for you, again, very simple and practical, is to remember to smile. It's funny because whenever my wife and I give talks, uh, she gives talks on customer experience, I focus more on leadership, but before either one of us goes on stage, we always call and text each other and we always say, remember to smile, remember to have a good time, because if you look like you're having a good time, everybody else will have a good time too. So by you smiling, by you looking like you're in a good mood, by you looking like you want to be there, other people will have that kind of light mood too. Remember that other people, oftentimes they want you to succeed. When you're communicating, nobody's sitting there thinking, I hope this person bombs and fails. They're rooting for you. And one of the ways that you can help them root for you is to, again, smile, act like you wanna be there. Just take it easy, relax, right? Don't put so much extra pressure and expectations on yourself. And you'll find that when you do that and when you're speaking and other people are in that light and more open and accepting mood, your points will get across much more effectively. So those are the strategies that I have for you today in this video. Let me just give you a quick recap. So number one is first remember to understand others before, before having them understand you. Number two, speak 20% slower than you normally would. Number three, use tone, pitch, and volume. Number four, incorporate stories. Uh, number five, remember to breathe. Number six, expect to be nervous and that's okay. Number seven, know your material. And the last one, number eight, smile and remember that people are rooting for you. So I hope you can implement these strategies. Again, whether you are speaking on a stage or with a small group of people. And if you like this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.